as to the uh, motion to quash uh, filed before this committee by Attorney Harry Roque. Uh, I submit, then, Mr. Mr. And then Mr. after, we will uh, recognize Congressman Abante. Congresswoman uh, Jinky Luistro, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As mentioned by the Honorable Paduano, the Quadcom is in possession of the Omnibus Motion and Compliance dated September 9, 2024, filed by Attorney Harry Roque. And I wish to remind the Quadcom that this motion originated from our hearing on August 22, 2024, where in the various questions we propounded, Attorney Harry Roque expressed his commitment to produce the documents. And for the understanding of the Filipino people, Mr. Chair, I wish to share excerpt of the video of our hearing dated August 22, 2024. Secretariat, please. Check. Volume, please. Congressman Luistro, uh, please uh, make this very quick because our topic for today is about extrajudicial. I understand, kill. Mr. Chair, so I will forgo with the video. To explain, Mr. Chair, this omnibus motion and compliance is made up of two parts. The first part is the motion to quash, that is from paragraph 1 to 33, and the second part is the compliance to the Shokos order, which is reflected in page 34. To 43. This representation wished to make a manifestation with respect to the motion to quash filed by the attorney Harry Roque. In support of the above motion, Mr. Chair, he raised the same arguments which have been deliberated upon already during the last hearing. And to satisfy the requirement of due process, Mr. Chair, let me reiterate our answers to the arguments which he raised. First, that the hearing is not in aid of legislation. In answer to that, let me explain, Mr. Chair, this Quadcom was created to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation pertaining to four issues which are haunting us. One is dangerous drugs, two is extrajudicial killing, three is the en masse acquisition of land, and four is the POGO operation. In other words, Mr. Chair, we are indeed an exercise of our power to conduct inquiry in aid of legislation which is granted by no less than the Philippine Constitution, Mr. Chair. Second, Attorney Harry Roque argued that the documents requested are not germane to the inquiry in aid of legislation. Again, in the case of Arnold versus Nazareno, there are two requirements. One is materiality to the subject matter. And second is materiality to the possible legislation. With respect to the first requirement, Mr. Chair, it is the humble submission of this representation that the Quad Committee has established an overwhelming circumstantial evidence showing the connection of attorney Harry Roque to Lucky South Corporation, which is a POGO operator where we apprehended Chinese nationals victims of human trafficking, murder, and internet scam. Mr. Chair, at the height of the interpolation, we ask about the Biancham Corporation, 
which owns the property in Tuba, Benguet, where the IT employee of this Lake South was apprehended. And that is where we started investigating Biancham. And then it was followed by our investigation on the subsidiary companies. As we investigate on Biancha, Mr. Chair, we found out the sudden increase of his assets in 2018, coming from 125,000 before 2016 in 2018. The current assets of Biancham rose to 125 million. At the height of the interpolation, Mr. Chair, Attorney Harry Roque articulated that his money did not come from POGO operation. To emphasize, Mr. Chair, that statement did not come from Quadcom, did not come from this representation. Instead, it came from the mouth of Attorney Harry Roque. This is an admission, therefore, Mr. Chair, that he admits the connection of these documents which we are requiring from him from the investigation on POGO operation that we are conducting right now. To further explain, Mr. Chair, it was admitted that he was the presidential spokesperson during that time with a very limited income. And then we asked him, where did this 65 million came from? Where did this money came from? And he could not explain except that he sold a certain property in multinational company in Paranaque. To conclude, Mr. Chair, there is a question about the source of the money of Biancham Corporation, which belongs to attorney Harry Roque. And following his question, if he will not be able to prove the legal and valid source of this sudden increase of assets of Biancham, then there is a reasonable ground to believe that indeed he is connected with POGO operation and this money possibly came from the POGO operation. The second element, Mr. Chair, is the materiality to the possible legislation. And during the last hearing, Mr. Chair, we reiterated, ano po ba ang mga batas na posibleng aamiendahan, muling pag-aaralan in connection to this Squadcom hearing? And we cited, RA 3019, this is the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act na baka sakali na ang ating mga government officials ay nakurap because of this POGO operation. We also have Code of Professional Responsibility of Government Officials that we need to revisit already these, the provisions of this law to make sure that the government officials and employees do not deviate from what is being mandated by the Code of Professional Responsibility of Government Officials. We also have anti-money laundering. Kulang po ba ang provision ng anti-money laundering? At nagkaroon ng mga transfer ng huge amount of money in spite of the existence of this law. We also have corporation law. Bakit po ba nagagamit na shield? ang mga corporation in perpetrating illegal activities. We can also consider, Mr. Chair, the Code of Professional Responsibility and Accountability for Lawyers. Ito po ba'y saklaw pa if the lawyers are already protecting illegal activities of their client? In addition to this, Mr. Chair, we have established already the need to revisit the law such as the PSA Charter dahil na abuso po ang ating batas patungkol sa late registration, our immigration law on visa issuance, the PAGCOR Charter on licensing of POGO, and the Cybercrime Law or RA 10175. Mr. Chair, to proceed, another argument that was raised is the right to self-incrimination. And I wish to share again the case of De La Cruz versus People. Napakaliwanag po sa batas na ito. When we speak about the right against self-incrimination, we're talking only about testimonial evidence. And this time, Mr. Chair, what we are asking are documents. The documents which he promised to produce during the hearing of August 22, 2024. Fourth, Mr. Chair, he invoked the right to privacy. And again, in the case of Standard Chartered Bank, 
versus Senate Committee, citing the case of Sabio versus Gordon, the right to privacy of Philippi the right to privacy is subordinated to the right to public information in matters of public interest. In other words, Mr. Chair, if there is a conflict between the right to privacy versus the right to public information and matters of public interest, the latter should prevail. Mas mataas po ang right to public information on matters of public interest kumpara sa right to privacy. And finally, Mr. Chair, he invoked the right to due process. This is the purpose of our hearing, to give ample opportunity to our resources speaker to explain their side. We satisfy amply the requirement of notice and even the requirement of hearing. But we are all witnesses. He has been dispensing his opportunity to be able to explain before the Quad all the possible allegations which are being imputed by this investigation. Mr. Chair, I wish to add as well as part of this manifestation that when he filed the motion to quash prior to the receipt of the written subpoena, wala pa pong written subpoena na tinatanggap si Attorney Harry Roque. Nag-file na siya ng motion to quash. Why? Because he knows already during the meeting that he expresses commitment to produce the documents. Reason why we issued the subpoena. To my humble opinion, Mr. Chair, he waived already his right to receive the written subpoena. Second, Mr. Chair, during the last hearing, we extensively discussed his arguments and our answers why we denied his first motion to quash. And third, Mr. Chair, in this motion, omnibus motion and compliance, siya po mismo ang nagsabi. Same arguments ang nerase niya. As a matter of fact, he said he is refiling the motion to quash. In other words, Mr. Chair, lahat po ng nakasulat dito ay nasagot na natin during the last hearing. I therefore submit, Mr. Chair, that we should deny this omnibus motion, particularly the motion to quash, because this is already moot and academic. I submit, Mr. Chair.